Um, in this area, not much. Um, but I'm also not super far from LA County. I'd say I'm probably like a 15, 20 minute drive um, to like Calabasas area. And then, you know, LA, LA isn't like, probably into the heart of LA is probably an hour away. Um, sure. So yeah, not not super far from scenes, but definitely not in the heart of them. Yeah, I mean, I used to ride my motorcycle from Ventura into Los Angeles to go to galleries and oh, like nice. Thai town and buy ingredients for cooking, you know, like, because in Ventura as well, it's like there, there are, uh, <clears throat> there are uh, good cultural offerings and things, but obviously it's not as contemporary as, as a scene like Los Angeles would be. No, but still really cool. Still a cool spot. Tell me a little bit yeah. about, um, about your work. We're presenting this series of sculptures and I mean, they're striking. I, when I opened up your application submission and I saw them, I was like, wait, what's going on here? And I had to go to your uh, website and Instagram, you know, to check you out and everything. And I was like, what am I seeing this? Like, what am I, what am I getting a viewpoint into it? What is the significance of this? So I was like, I got to talk to this guy. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much. One, thank you for doing this podcast with me and accepting me into the Bureau of Queer Art. I'm super excited. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions. I started this work um the original bear um which kind of started it all I feel like that's really where I started to find my voice as an artist um I've been creative my whole life um but that was the first piece especially the first sculpture where I was like okay like I feel like I'm hitting my groove here um and then the last piece unbearable the one that's like stitching its chest um that I made back in 2019 um but it's a very important series of work for me. It's very personal. Um, I can dive in how wherever you want. Is there any like specific questions? Like, what are you what are you thinking here? Well, let's. I mean, I think I think the most interesting way to approach it is maybe to think about what what is the significance of the work in your story. What is it that you're trying to okay. communicate? Okay. So I really see my practice as like this ongoing diary. And a lot of my work, all of my work is very he uh, heavily personal. And especially this series is um, an exploration of identity, my sexuality, but also my gender. Um, I'm transgender, um, trans mask. I started my transition over 11 years ago now. Um, and it really was a way for me to celebrate myself and to love myself. Um, I've had, I guess you could say a complicated relationship with my body over the years and making these sculptures and these works has been an act of self-love and self-celebration. Um, especially the first bear that was before I had my top surgery. And it was this way to look at myself in a different light by recreating my image, I have a chance to look at myself in a different way and act with this like care and tenderness towards myself. Um, the work is sewn, so it's mostly all fabric. Um, the only parts that aren't fabric are the hands, feet, and face. The body is all sewn. I use a textile hardener, which is like one of my favorite mediums ever. And then I paint it with acrylics, varnish it, glue like faux fur trimmings to it. And then on the um, the more recent of the two, Unbearable, the one that's like performing the top surgery on itself, that I actually have my own hair is incorporated into it. So like the body hair and in the beard, I used to have longer hair back when I could grow more hair and I saved it. And then like that was incorporated into the sculpture itself. But even there's elements that aren't seen that are really personal, like in the armature, there's... Um, like sandbags to help like counterbalance the weight. And I collected that sand from Big Sur. And I used to go to Big Sur all the time growing up, like almost every summer with my family. So that's been a place that has really grounded me and been sentimental throughout my life. So that pulls in from my history, but I also see these pieces while they kind of memorialize moments in time, they also pull a um, grab from my entire history up until that point. 
granted every moment is that way, but yeah. Well, I mean, it, I, so let's go back into this idea of like placing uh, items with personal significance, like your hair, the sand from Big Sur into the sculpture. And how did you make the decision that these were the things that you wanted to do? And what are you, what are you communicating with those to the audience? If they can't tell they're there necessarily as like an item with significance, um, how does it form the overall significance of the piece to you too? Yeah, so self-portraits are really important to me um, because they mark these moments in time and because it is a way um, for me to express love towards myself and heal. Um, and while I list on Unbearable that it's the artist's hair, you know, that stuff can get overlooked. And I don't talk about the significance of the sand. That's more for me, which I also find interesting because it's on the inside of the bear. It's concealed. You wouldn't know about it um, unless like directly told about it. So I am... Um, I like having these things that hold significance to me, maybe almost being like a little secret or a little like ode to myself. Um, I love saving sentimental things and seeing how I can use them in the future. I hang on to a lot of stuff um, that I just, I find a lot of value in objects and there's so much history and things. Um, and so, yeah, it, it all plays a part. Um, but yeah, some of it, I guess, is like just for me and it's this little secret, um, but it's fun I love to this. share. I love the idea that you could, that it, it's like a, there's like these secret things inside of, inside of the sculptures too, which I hadn't, I hadn't uh, gotten from anything that I read or saw within your work before. And it just, it, to me, it feels really interesting. How does the secret relate to your, your transition? Um, got you. Um, well, I see. That's a deep one, right? That's a big one. Um, <laughs> everything leads me to where I am now. And so even though I've had a lot of struggles feeling at home in myself, there's certain objects and certain things and certain places that have given me feelings of home. Um, mm -hmm. even when I couldn't feel grounded within my own skin. So like Big Sur, that being a reoccurring place in my life, that feels like home. Um, I've always been super attached to my hair. Like before I transitioned, before I even like clicked that I was trans and everything, I loved my long, beautiful hair. And it was like a really big part of my identity. And so once I transitioned and I was like, okay, I'm going to save what little hair I have left before it gets too thin and I don't want to grow it out anymore. Um, because that was something that helped me feel like home in my skin, even before when I felt so lost within myself. Sure. Um, so yeah, I find those things to be really important elements to the sculptures because these sculptures also are an element of home for me. Um, I find a lot of love in the work and an element of these, these things that bring me joy and have helped kind of ground me and feel like these senses of home are now brought into the work. And home for you as a, as a queer person, what, what, how do you define home before your transition? I think I really associate home with love. Okay. Um, and love, whether it's from community or a sense of safety, which I kind of associate with love a lot too. Um, because before I transitioned, like I was really close with my friends growing up in high school and stuff. And even though I felt uncomfortable in my skin, I always felt loved and accepted by my friends, no matter who I was or however I identified. Um, I always joke, I've been the L, the G, the B, and the T, and now I'm just, I'm just queer for, you know, it encompasses all of that. But um, I've always had like a strong sense of community among my friends and a lot of love coming from them. And then now I can feel a sense of home at myself because I've been able to do what I can do to make my body my home. And, um, 
it's been a long road. It's been a long journey. And I think what's beautiful about transitioning, at least for me, is that it never really ends. Um, we're constantly in flux. We're constantly in transition. And so that's something that I really learned from transitioning. And I'm just thankful that I've had like the support along the way. Um, so that that's what gives me a sense of home is, is love. That's really beautiful. I I have to say that there's there's also like a little bit of uh, visually a little bit of horror when you initially approach the images because you know like I, you think of like the build a bear sort of thing or something you know and like I have, I've always felt like that 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 place in itself is its own horror like a like a, a horror house a little bit because <laughs> a little yeah. bit yeah like a sort of violence to the idea of like being able to pick and choose your elements and like push them together and create this identity and stuff. But how do you, how, what is the response to, from the audience when they see that initially and how does it, how does it change as they invest in, in the work too? So, yeah, that's interesting. Um, I see these objects with so much love, right? Like here they are representations of me but I get a lot of, you know, comments where people are a little like, yeah, exactly. Like kind of the shock of them. Um, but I like that. I like that there's a reaction, you know, and people at first are kind of off put, but then they want to approach the work because they're curious. Um, and they want to look at the details and, you know, people, I've had people ask a lot of questions about the work and, um, I've always been into like plushies, like stuffed animals and stuff. Um, I had God knows how many beanie babies growing up and stuffed animals. And I think, um, like toys are a very important element to my work. Um, there's this element of play for me and that's for me as well. And that may not come through in the work as much, um, but I'm okay with that. I think I like that there's kind of this juxtaposition of like, here's this hybridized, somewhat teddy bear s thing that is uh, oh. anthropomorphic. Right, and it's sewing itself. So yeah, like I love the because it's not like in in some representations within the trans experience and art, it tends to be more. In, in, especially in the area of surgery, it tends to be more about outward forces applying in a, as opposed to the artists themselves controlling and, and literally like showing that, that um, surgery. I mean, that's a, it's a very powerful image. Um, like it just, it kind of, it sets you back a little bit. And, and I, I, I don't mean like to be offensive with the word horror because like there's a really, good history of how horror and, and films and books actually is a parallel to the queer experience as well. Yeah. So I, I think it's, it's really engaging and beautiful. Are you working on new work now or? I am. And um, yeah, I'll tell you about my new work in a second, but um, I think that that's really interesting. I think that's a really good point. Um, I really was playing with this idea of self-made. I hear a lot within my community, like I'm a self-made man. And I thought it would be interesting making work that is making itself in a lot of ways. It's transforming itself. Um, because surgery for me was really empowering and it was a choice I made. It was something I needed to do for me to feel good. Um, but a lot of work went into even being able to have surgery, all the insurance and back and forth and, you know, all of it. it. It's a lot of work just to get to that, that point. And then it's this monumental thing. And you go to sleep one way, you wake up and you're different. Like, it's, it's an adjustment, even though it's exciting. It's still like, oh, whoa, this is my body now. Um, and I thought it would be interesting kind of showing that becoming. Um, as for the work I'm making now, I'm kind of revisiting this series in in a way I'm not making another um, self-portrait bear but I started making a self-portrait doll I literally started like two days ago and it's all going to be sewn out of muslin like 
all the features. I'm hoping it looks as much like me as humanly possible. I'm feeling pretty good so far. Um, and I'm really excited about it. Like, I'm really excited about it. One, it's a fun selling challenge. Um, but two, it's exciting revisiting the self-portrait. I, I really, it's fun coming back to every several years and kind of reimagining and, you know, checking in with where I'm at. And then um, I want to explore with photography a bit, whether it's collaborating with a photographer, but I'm thinking about ideas around family portraits and also the idea of the artist with the art. And then also how like people go to museums and it's like taking, it's like a photo op for a lot of people. So I thought, it would be interesting kind of experimenting with this idea of like, here I am, the artist posed with the art and it's a self-portrait with a self-portrait. Um, and I'd also be curious to get photos of the doll on its own um, and just kind of like it's on its own adventure. It's living its own life. And I think that's what's really special about objects in general, you know, and art, like it's made it goes through this whole creation period and then it's out in the world. It, new memories are being formed with it, with the public interacting with it, whether it's something that you can actually touch or not, it's, it's forming its own identity out in the world through the eyes of others. And so I think photography is an interesting tool that I would like to start playing with a bit. And this doll I think is a really interesting avenue of going about that. Um, I think as an object, it's gonna be pretty special and I'm excited to kind of see what I can do with it. Um, and it goes back to, you know, relating to toys and childhood, which is so quintessential to my work. It's kind of a way for me not to relive my childhood. In a way you could say reimagine, um, but it's really this element of play. I think play is really important. I think we lose a big part of that as adults. It's kind of like, we're taught to be more serious. And I see play as um, parallel to exploration and curiosity instead of something that to be looked down upon or seen as childish. And even if it is seen as childish, I don't think, see that as a bad thing. Like children well, are filled with wonder. Well, and also like you're, you're growing up in a, in a body as a child that you're, you may not even be aware is going to betray you. Um, yes your teen years so play is a way of negotiating that too um, yeah even even as an adult you know like honoring that child you know i'm i can only imagine the distance between the bear pieces and what you're doing now the amount of growth and understanding that you have about yourself and so it'll be exciting to see like that development are they do you do you show, would you show them next to each other just show that in a linear form i think that could be really cool i'm also very curious so i have that father with child photograph with the picture of me with the original bear um and that's kind of like my first experimentation of like the family portrait idea um i think it'd be interesting to show them um alongside each other but i also think it could be interesting staging them together and having photographs so right. it's a family portrait among these self-portraits. Um, I, want, I want that photo of you as a child with the bear for the show um, online and for the magazine as well, because I think it adds a dimension to the story. Do you, would you share that you. with The father with child picture? Yeah. Yeah, I would love yeah. to have that. Oh, Just yeah, as, no. As a reference point, I think, like telling the story, it's it's such a powerful um, thing to have that as a reference point. And it gives a sense of that history that you talk about that leads up to the creation of those pieces. I mean, you know, everybody always thinks, oh, you know, I could do that. I could, I could, so that I could paint that or something. And, you know, it's like the 30 plus years of experience, the education and all the things that lead to it. Maybe it takes you know, two weeks to create, but it's all that history. So I like the idea of the photo being with, with the bear. I think that's a really, that's powerful. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. I, that was the first time I ever like had a photographic piece. Um, and I, I'm proud of that one. I feel really good about that one. And I think it is interesting, you know, that 
conversation of artists with the art and the self portraits and family portraits. So I'm excited to keep exploring that with this new piece and then incorporating past work and photographs with that. I also, I mean, I started sewing in middle school. I taught myself to sew and I have some of the first things I've sewn. I used to make little sock monsters. Um, and so I'm also curious to get like this idea of a family portrait of like the first things I've sewn with the most recent things I've sewn. So like, here's this self-portrait doll holding like this little weird sock bunny thing that I made. Um, yeah, so I just think there's so much to explore. Um, and that's really exciting, so. Well, I, I mean, I, it's exciting to get introduced to you and the work that you're doing and we'll be presenting um, your work in the magazine, of course, and then um, in Artsy as well. But we have the show coming up in Ventura that I'll be curating. Um, with a combination of Mexican queer artists and U.S. queer artists um, in April. So I don't know. We should talk. Where do people follow the progress of this new piece that you're creating? Um, I'm sure they'll hear this in the podcast and they'll be like, I want to check in and see what's going on. Where do we follow you? Okay, so I will start posting work in progress pics to Instagram. I think I'll just make them stories for now and then maybe I'll get a reel going. Um, I'm not the best with social media at times. That's not the fun part, but I want to start getting more into it because people are very curious and people are into the process, which I totally understand. It's fun. It's cool seeing things pieced together. Um, but yeah, Instagram, my Instagram will be the best place to follow me for that. What was your Instagram again? It was uh, Mason. Mason Weiss Art. So my full art. name and then art at the end. Yeah. All right. Super. Well, I, I'm, I'm excited uh, to start collaborating with you. I hope that we continue.